Welcome to my playground. Let's go have some fun. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's Wednesday, December 20th. We got five days till Christmas. The countdown is on. Tomorrow is Thursday, and I'm going to do my live streaming event. I do these every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my lovely co-host, we go on for an hour. We're trying to stretch it to an hour and a half so we can look at more stocks. You can't look at a lot of stocks in the small amount of time we have. So if you have a ticker you want us to look at, put it in the queue. But get it in there early if you really want it looked at before 4 o'clock. I put up a placeholder for the video around lunchtime. You can drop the ticker in then. First come, first served. Plus, that gives me more time to go over the information for you. 4 o'clock, Thursday, be there. So what I do on this show is I like to share my due diligence with you on hot OTC and penny stocks. These are stocks that are under 5 bucks that you can find on any market. And we're particularly looking for stocks that have potential to make us money. Now, when I'm finding these stocks that have potential, I'm normally right here at Think or Swim, my free trading platform. I'm going through penny stock scans, looking at charts. I don't pick and choose. I just put them in an order, maybe volume at the top or percentage change at the top. And I start at the top and I just start going through each and every one of them. Now, I've got it set up so it goes real quick for me. I can just use keys on my uh, keyboard here. But this is how I do it. So what I want to do with you right now, before we look at the three hot stocks I do want to share with you, is look at some hot charts I found just before the show. Now, I don't have any information about these companies. All I know is there's heat in the charts. So I've done stage one. I'm going to leave stage two to you, the research. Find that hot news to match it. Now, in saying this, yesterday I shared three hot stocks with you that we knew nothing about. Uh, SBNY, which was Signature Bank. It went up 48% today. Turns out it was on the expert market. Then we looked at PBBS. I think it was up 12% when I looked at it. And the other one was TTOO. And it was up like 9%. The point, we didn't know anything about them except they had heat in the charts. So that is a predominant factor. Now, when you find heat in a chart, it is good to go find a catalyst. But you see, three out of three ran without knowing anything about them. And I got four for you right now. First one we're going to take a look at, had the biggest gains today. This is Right On Brands, ticker R-T-O-N. Finished the day, ooh, took a jump. I saw it at 48%. She is up almost 61% today at 1.4 cents. Now, the reason I like this chart is because she had a huge rip, and I don't know anything about this. I don't know why she ripped. I'm just looking at technicals. And she came all the way back down to the 200, dipped underneath like a rubber ball, and came back on top, and she is shooting. And as I said, I saw her at 48%, and that was maybe 2 o'clock, 2.30 this afternoon, and she's taken another 15% jump, and she's up there at 61%. So you can see she is taking off right now. The oscillators say things are all turning up just now. This looks like a good recovery bounce to me. Now we had two big surges here, one to here and one to here. This line there is the middle of that first surge, dead center. This line here is the middle of that big surge. These are the halfway points, which I believe the price is going to work its way towards. Once it gets on top of this one, it's going to get a boost, a turbo boost, and it'll start pushing towards this one. That first one is up there at $0.02, cents, and we are down here at $0.1.4. Cents. So that's about 25% gains right there, and I do believe she'll do it. Let's take a look at the next one. This is Tinley Beverage Company, ticker TNYBF. Now, I'm vaguely familiar with this company. I think it was back in 2019, 2020, she came onto the cannabis sector scene. This is a California company that makes, for lack of a better word, a cannabis alcoholic beverage. It gets you drunk, but there's no alcohol in it. It's THC, so maybe you're getting high. I don't know. Now, I do believe they're still making that drink. I think they've expanded into alcohol as well and maybe even non-alcoholic beverages. Well, she was on a downtrend here. It is a perfect atypical breakout chart. 200 falling fast with the price deep underneath it. 
You could see her eagerness here. She was deep underneath it and jumped all the way up to the 200 and tapped it. That gives you a reason to watch it. She's showing eagerness. Went sideways for a long time, and here in the last three days, she has decided to break out, folks. And it looks like she took off at, at the rest of the day. All of our oscillators, every single one of them is going to the moon. When all of your oscillators are going up, you can't fail. Looks like our volume has been increasing here, too, over the last week or so. Taking a look at the next one, this is CRCW. She had 15% gains today. She finished the day at almost double zero two. Now, there was something specific I wanted to share about this with you because it's going to come into play with one of the stocks we're going to take a look at. We had a nice run here. She was all the way back here at double zero one. Now, she started to climb her way up here, but it was right in this zone at November 28th, right there. All right, that's at double zero one. She was in the triple zeros down here. On November 28th, the CEO, I believe it was, an insider, bought 31 million shares of the company. Huge buy, considering they only had a million shares to start with, so now they got 32 million. Well, that sounds really big. I mean, it is, it's a lot of shares, but it's only about $35,000. In any case, she ran for seven days on that news and nothing else. One insider buy that was big. Boom. She blasted here from double zero one up to uh, 1.8 cents. 1,800% gains right there, folks, on an insider buy. Then she came all the way back down. She's landed on her 200 and she is bouncing off of it right now. And again, I have drawn the center point of this huge surge and she is going to have this will to try to get to that point. And she may stumble right up underneath here, but I do expect some growth right now. Our oscillators show a little bit of heat and a little bit of weakness going on right now because she is struggling. And the last one I want to take a look at is Vapo. Vapo Therm, ticker VAPO, finished the day at 13% gains and 90 cents. Now, the reason we're looking at it, she hit a three year low. This support goes all the way back. We're at a four hour chart right now. Let's go back three years, right there. Now, you can see, goodness gracious. Now, if there was a, there is, there's a reverse split right here, and I don't see a big green bar. So I know whatever the reverse split was, it happens to be a one and eight. So they multiplied everything behind here by eight. That's still pretty bloody high. That's $307 high back here. Divide that by eight. Uh, I don't know what that is. That's like, I don't know, $40, $50. In either case, you can see where that three-year low came from. She is hitting that right now, and I don't expect her to come below it because she's never come below it. So I'm thinking she is probably going to start to climb. And when I went down to the lower charts, I found ourselves some resistances that we can pay heed to. Obviously, this one's real strong where she fell from. This is where she's going to try to get back to home. This is where she's been for a very long time, right in that flat zone right there. We can't see it like that. In either case, right now she is bouncing off of it. She's underneath her nine. She can't climb till she's on top of her nine. Once she gets on top here, I expect her to start moving up. She's got a lot of work to do, but this is an irregular fall hitting a very strong three-year low. I'm expecting a bounce. All right, now let's take a look at the four stocks that we've been watching. A lot of us have been watching. We looked at them yesterday. CEOS, Inpixion, IFIS, and Liquor. Real briefly, just to see where they're going, okay? Let's take a look at CEOS. She finished today at almost 17% gains at two and a half cents. That four hour chart's looking very strong. She had this big drop here, fell down to the low, and she's got to fill that gap when she starts coming back up. Well, you can see she is fighting that center line right there. Let's see what it looks like. Actually, I want to come in on this on the hour. Maybe we'll get a little more information on that. So there you go. She fought this resistance right here, went way up high. This was a jump from about uh, one and a half cents three days ago, hit that high of 3.2, came down, and you can see where she's riding. 
right there, folks. From bottom to top, it is the 20-day SMA, and she is not breaking out of this this habit. She is still bouncing on it and climbing. Our, vi our volume is still very strong. All of our SMAs, including the 200, is climbing, and all of our oscillators are turning up right now. Looks like she's got more to give. The other one was uh, liquor. This one's just come on the market in August. She had a reverse split. She has been climbing uh, for about eight days now, starting off at 95 cents. Today, she's at $4.36, and she isn't changing. She's in her channel, bouncing around in there, but she hasn't come out of the channel. So everything is as it's been going and getting better. Look at how strong our 200-day SMA is now. That's really turned around. Our next one is in Pixian. By the way, liquor did 10% gains today, finished at $4.36. I did say that. In Pixian, all right, and Pixian's got a lot of things going on right now, folks. The chart isn't relaying it. She has been consolidating a lot of accumulation down here on this strong support. You can see she's come down three days ago and just hasn't moved. We've been waiting for it. Now, what's the catalyst? Well, how much time you got? <laughs> Let me put it in a nutshell. They're doing a spin out onto the NASDAQ. We're going to get free dividends. Once that spin out's done, they're doing a merger with that new spin out with Damon Motors, an electric motorcycle company. That's a catalyst. So your new dividend stock should start to run, right? In the same window of time, the next couple of weeks, in Pixie and themselves are doing a merger with XTI, an aerial liftoff. Uh, airplane company. That's going to get this stock running. Well, it's not running yet, and she has taken a big dip. Let me back up here. She was all the way up here at 11 cents, came down to just under 6 cents, and this is where she's at right now. Personally, I think it's a buy. I think it's a buy. I think you're going to want to be a part of this one way or the other. You know, you've got two mergers and you've got a dividend. You can't lose if you get the dividend. So I see a lot of potential here, folks. And right now, she is still sitting down there waiting for everybody to buy up before she takes off. That's the way I see it. Last one is IFAS, the green cattle feed, uh, the stuff that comes from sugarcane husk and helps fight the ozone, helps fight smell, helps fight anti uh bacterial agents and cows. It does all sorts of good things and it is a new product that is hitting the market. She has been climbing, but the last three days she's been falling and she's come underneath a very strong support. We weren't expecting that. She was bouncing across that yesterday, had two big green bars. We thought she was going to keep climbing. Surprise! You don't know anything for sure. She came down immediately Landed on that strong support the whole day she was bouncing on it until the end of the day. She lost it and fell under. And what is our price right now? 7.7. Seven. Where is this? Oh, my God. Yeah, it's way down here. That's a surprise, folks. Now, I'm going to presume because of the desperation of everything, all the oscillators are coming down, even on the one-hour chart. I think it's going to come back down very close to the 200. Sad to say, I think it is. And that's down there right now at just about six cents. So it could come back down to there. But I'm expecting this to bounce. This company's got a lot going on for it. The revenues are just coming in. Keep your eye on IFIS. She's taking a dip right now, but there is going to be a recovery, in my opinion. Our 200 is climbing. All right, enough. I want to keep talking about these stocks because I like these stocks, but I've got three other stocks I want to share with you, and I've got as much information that you're going to need to get you excited, but not enough information if you want to invest. Always do your due diligence behind me. Let's go take a look at these. Our first stock, I'm no stranger to. This is EPAZ Inc., ticker EPAZ. I became familiar with this company. I think it was back in 2019 or 20. I bought into the company way back then, and I'm way down on it right now. When the company originally came on the market, it was with a drone, and they were using it solely in the cannabis sector. They were using it to monitor hemp fields, not for security purposes, 
but they had the technology built into the drone where they could fly over the field and they could determine how many males and how many female plants there were. You can only make money off of one. So this was a way to calculate how much money a field was actually worth. Well, now they're doing a lot of things with it, more important things. And they do a lot of other things as well. And they just had news come out today about a contract they are working with with the U.S. military. So EPAS finished the day just under 002 at 0019. And she was just over 22.5% gains today. She is a hot pink. She's current. She's got those two green ticks I'm always talking about, a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. That's validated information. You don't get validated information with pinks, folks, not even their disclosures. All we do with pinks is take management's word for everything. So this is the only validated information you're normally going to get with a pink. So it looks good. So what does EPAS do specifically? Well, we've got a description here, and it is accurate, but that's real wordy. And they had a nice description in their news press, but it didn't tell you enough. This is like mama bear, papa bear, isn't it? But I found a real good description over here at their website. We're at epaz.com. Epaz Inc. is a mission-critical provider of metaverse solutions, blockchain, cryptocurrency apps, and cloud-based business solutions. We provide customized software enterprise solutions to businesses, governments, healthcare providers, and post-secondary institutions. Moreover, our software products include office space management, Bitcoin wallet, and payment system, applicant tracking system, and innovative industrial drone technology, among many others. EPAS is developing metaverse business solutions that enable people to collaborate in real time through virtual reality and augmented reality. See, they're doing a lot more than just drones. And they give you a list down here of what they've got going on. But the one you don't see here, the one they're making money with right now, are the drones. So what was the relative volume around the company today? We got a 100% jump. She doubled today, going from 20.3 million to 40.9 million. Share structure? Oh, we got a lot of shares. Outstanding share count is 1.1 billion. Insiders own about 43 million of them, still leaving us with over a billion shares in the float. Market cap for the company is currently 1.7 million. Financials for the company. Well, the, over the last four years, they've been doing between one and a half million to two million. Now we know it's millions because we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. As you can see, the cost of revenue is nothing because most of their revenues have been predominantly from their digital office space products. Looking at our quarterlies, still coming from those digital products, they're doing about a half a million dollars every quarter. Looking at the balance sheet, well, thank God for them three zeros. <laughs> They've got $1,000 in the bank. Probably need to keep it there or the account will be closed. Total assets for the company, about $4.9 million. Total liabilities is about the same, $4.9 million, which leaves us positive shareholder equity of $27,000. we are not holding a bag here. Looking at the disclosures for the company, we haven't had anything since April. And that was a good one. That was a filing for a large investor coming into the company. Taking a look at the news. Now, we've got lots of news here. And if you keep rolling on back, you'll see they've had lots of news. Most of the news we've gotten, a lot of the news in the past, is about partnerships that they're making. They are creating a footprint in lots of different areas in the world so that they can at any time demonstrate their drones to big corporations, to the government, anybody. And that's where we're picking up at here in September. The company signs a memorandum of understanding with Taiwan defense contractor Thunder Tiger Corps. The company to demo with the U.S. Navy and updates licenses and certifications with the U.S. Air Force. These are going to be huge contracts, folks. The company forms Zena Drone to demo with partner in NATO countries, German defense, law enforcement, and rail line. 
I do want to dive into this one. The company Zenadrone Predictive Artificial Intelligence sends the first manufactured Zenadrone 1000s for drone as a service in Ireland. EPAS Holdings Zenadrone working to establish new partnerships with the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. And then we've got a piece of news that just came out today and I definitely want to dive into that one. So the news about Ireland. This came out October 3rd. EPAS Inc., a mission critical provider of drone technology, artificial intelligence software, cryptocurrency apps, blockchain mobile apps, and cloud-based business software solutions, has announced today that Zenadrone is sending the first drones manufactured from the company's new manufacturing facility to Ireland. This is the first of 20 that will be in service in Ireland. The company estimates that each deployed drone can generate over $100,000 per year. Or if they're going to send 20 there, that's $2 million a year just for this contract. That other piece of news that just came out today, EPAS Holdings, Zenadrone Inc. executes U.S. Air Force contract Phase 1 SBIR award for dual purpose technology. Zenadrone is now a revenue producing venture and the company is expecting major revenue streams in 2024. The company is meeting with the Air Force high ranking personnel this week as part of the planning sessions. This is a major event that advances the company to the next level and provides it with more resources. Zenadrone is now a revenue producing venture and the company is expecting major revenue streams in 2024. The company is focused on getting to phase two in the next 90 days, which is a contract award of up to $1.2 million. And here we're just talking about the Air Force. They are also dealing with the Navy. So they've got lots of people they're working with. Go back through the news. You'll see they're getting their foot in the door in a lot of places. And I'm expecting once that door opens up, this is going to explode. You saw the revenues just on their digital products. They're not going to go anywhere. Now the Zena drones are going to come in adding millions of dollars. I'm liking this and I'm liking the chart too. Let's go take a look at it. Back to Think or Swim. We are taking a look now at EPAS Inc. ticker EPAZ. That's a six month, four hour view with our high six months ago of about 1.4 cents. She's had a huge fall to a low here in November of 0015. Now there is no shortage of volume here, folks. It's thick. But it's been getting stronger here over the last couple of months and even these last couple of days. Now, off of this low bubble, she started getting active, folks. She's not going down anymore. She's going sideways and showing signs of wanting to climb. We've got one bounce here off of the low bubble, getting through a strong resistance, coming back down to this support, breaking this resistance, breaking the 200, coming back down to this resistance, and now shooting up again. Each one of these are getting higher and higher while the 200 is getting closer and closer. I'm presuming this is going to be breaking out here real shortly. All of our oscillators are looking very good right now. Each one of them is turned around and starting to climb. Looking at our 20 day one hour view. So we've got a lot of volatility here. But you can see she is definitely paying heed to this very strong support down here. And she hit a high here of 003 and a low of 0015. That's a 100% jump from this support up to that resistance. And we're at the bottom right now. And that's what she's doing. She's bouncing between these two, working her way towards that 200 so that she can go even further. Oscillators look great here. Our PPO has got a crossover climbing. Our MACD has hit the signal line crossing it with green bars accumulating. Our RSI is continually climbing. And we've got a pattern here between my ADX trend continuation and my PPO. This, whenever you have a straight line, and it doesn't matter if it's going down or up or sideways, if it is a straight line, it's telling you that whatever the trend is on the chart, it's going to continue until that line changes. Well, when I see my blue ADX or my blue PPO going up and my red ADX going down and they're spreading apart, guaranteed 100% your stock is climbing. And it works exactly the opposite. If the two are coming together, as you see right here, the blue line's coming down, the red line's coming up, what's going on? It's falling. And once they got real close, it went flat 
Once they started spreading, it started to climb. So this looks really good on the one hour chart. Taking a look at our five day, five minute. Well, she's been in a downtrend. She hit this low bubble. She's not falling anymore. She's now going sideways on that strong support. Just as our 200 haul turned, she made a jump. When it was perfectly flat in the middle, she jumped all the way to the 200. I'm going to take that as a token sign that she wants to go. She's very eager. She came back down higher than where she started from on the 50 now, and she has pushed her way across that 200, and she has had a big green bar at the end of the day. All of our oscillators are now turning up and starting to climb. Every single SMA is crossing the 200 right now. It's looking like it wants to continue, folks. And right now, this is a really, really good price if you like the company. Double zero one nine. You know, you could get double zero one, but you get it now at double zero four. You've already made a hundred percent gains. So if you don't want to hang around, you can get out then and take a hundred percent gains. And that's not very far from where we're at. So I'm liking EPAS. She's getting big contracts. Zenodrone is now starting to be bought. They are going to start making more money. The revenues are going to grow. She's going to become more valuable. The stock's going to have more value. EPAZ. I'm liking it, but then I'm invested in it. <laughs> this next stock, Beyond Air, ticker XAIR, is the stock I was referring to when we were looking at hot charts. And I showed you that one chart and said the CEO made a purchase of 31 million shares and the stock ran for seven days, rising 1,800% gains. And it was only a $35,000 purchase. Well, this is the stock I was referring to. We don't have just one. We got two insider buys and they are far beyond $35,000. And it's a good time to look at it because we have an atypical breakout chart that is set up to break out right now. Beyond Air closed the day at $1.91 with just under 12.5% gains. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. So you're going to be able to get into it free, get out of it free, trade it pre-market, trade it after market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So what is this company about? Well, they tell us over here that Beyond Air is a commercial stage medical device and biopharmaceutical company dedicated to harnessing the power of endogenous and exogenous nitrous oxide to improve the lives of patients suffering from respiratory illness, neurological disorders, and solid tumors. The company has received FDA approval for its first system, LungFit PH, for the treatment of term and near-term neonates with hypoxic respiratory failure. Beyond Air is currently advancing its other lung fit systems in clinical trials for treatment of severe lung infections as well. The company also partnered with the Hebrew University of Jerusalem to advance a preclinical program dedicated to the treatment of autism and other neurological disorders. Beyond Cancer, an affiliate of Beyond Air, is an investment ultra high concentrations of no, that is nitrous oxide, with a proprietary delivery system to target certain solid tumors in preclinical settings. Now, luckily, we don't have to get into any news with any technical jargon because it is all about the insider trades. So, what was the relative volume today? Nice jump. We've got over five times her normal volume, over a 500% increase, going from just under a half a million to 2.8 million today. Share structure. Outstanding share count is just over 32 million. The insiders own a mere 3.3 million. That leaves us a float of about 29 million, which isn't a bad float. We won't call it a low float, but it is a good float. Market cap for the company, $55 million. Financials for Beyond Air. Well, a couple years ago, they were making money. Uh, the last two years, we have no money coming in. Quarterly, all right. Now we got money coming in for the last two quarters. She came in June with $59,000, lost $244,000. And in September, she made $239,000 and she lost $193,000. Good thing this isn't the catalyst. <laughs> Looking at the balance sheet, they got $18 million in the bank, $58 million total assets, and $32 total liabilities. 
giving us stockholder equity of positive $25.7 million. Looking at the disclosures, this is where we want to go. It's these S4s, folks. They both came out yesterday. These Form 4s, not S4s, Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of shares. And they can do that in a lot of ways. But we as traders, we're interested when they buy them or sell them themselves. And that's what we've got here. Two purchases. This one is from Kerry Robert. It's a director. They got themselves 1.2 million shares. Now we know it's a purchase. You see this code here? It's a P. You may see an amount here in green and it says they acquired them right there. But if this is an F or an M or a G, they got them in a different way. P is purchased, S is sale. So they purchased this 1.2 million shares at $1.63. You're looking at well over $2 million. I don't know how much it is, but it's well over. And they now own a total of 2.3 million shares. So they just doubled up basically. The other one is the CEO and the chairman of the board, Lisa Steven. Lisa just bought herself 77,000 shares at $1.63. And now she's got 1.5 million. Not that we need any more catalysts, but let's just take a look at the news. The most recent news is about those insider buys, but we had some real important news come out at the beginning of November. Beyond Cancer presents positive, first, in-human clinical data for ultra-high concentration nitrous oxide therapy in solid tumors during the Society for Immunotherapy of Cancer 2023. So they've obviously got some strong technology here. The revenues need help, but what are we interested in? Those inside buys. There are $2 million or more. The other one was only $35,000. Now, the big difference between the two here is the price of the stock. That big runner, that was at double zero one going up to over a penny. We are at almost two bucks. So I don't expect this to run as hard, but I do expect there to be a jump. Let's go take a look at this chart. That is a picture perfect, atypical breakout chart, folks. Seriously, take a picture of that. I think I will. This is Beyond Air, ticker XAIR. It's a six month, four hour view. Six months ago, we had a nice high of $7.16 when she was above the 200. When she came under the 200, that was pretty much it. Game over. She has been falling all of this time, hitting a low in mid November of $1.17. Off of that low, she changed her trend. We're done falling. She bounced up came back down and she's been going sideways methodically crossing all of her SMAs. Once she got through the 50, she fell back laying on that 200 day haul. We keep seeing this over and over again. Off of the 200, she worked her way across the 50 and then just kept on going to the 200 needing no other SMAs floating only on her nine day. After hitting the 200 a few times, she's relaxing. She's pulled back and she's sitting in full control, sitting on top of that nine day SMA. Looks real good. All of our SMAs have turned up and are starting to climb. Lots of volume these last two days. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is climbing with a little bit of pullback because of that red bar. Same thing going on with our MACD. RSI is pulled back a little, but it's still hot up there at 62. Taking a look at our 20 day, one hour view. Going sideways, took a dip just before it took a pounce, right? She came low just so she could get that extra oomph she needed to push through the 50 and the 200 and she's off and running. She tested the 200 by coming down to the 50 and bouncing back up and that was her launch pad. She got on her nine day escalator and launched. She has been growing hard and fast here. Halfway through the day, she did pull back. She was at about $2 roughly, and she has fallen back to $1.91, landing firmly on the 20-day SMA. That's good. She didn't come way down here and pull back. She's landed there. We are going to presume she's going to bounce off of this. All of our SMAs are turned up and climbing right now, and the volume today was particularly strong. Our oscillators, because of all of this red, are pulling down right now. But look at that 200. It was coming down hard and furious right here, right where it's totally flat is when it broke out, right? And now it is turning up. 
It is looking good on the one hour chart, even though the oscillators don't look that great. Looking at our five day, five minute. Well, that's not bad. I mean, it is an uphill climb all the way up from $1.45, hitting a high of $2.11, and then pulling back, breaking the 200, and now she's bouncing. Now, where is she bouncing? She, I mean, she's floating in midair right there, so she's got to be hitting something. Nothing on the 15-minute. There you go. How about the 30-minute? Looks like she hit the 50-day on the 30-minute, and she's bounced back, and we got a green bar right there showing tendencies of wanting to climb. So even though the five minute doesn't look great because it's hanging there in the air, by looking at the other charts, we get that assurance that it's not dangling. She's just bouncing off of the 50. So actually this all looks good. I would put XA high R on my watch list just because of what we saw CR, CW do, the CEO that bought 31 million shares. If this does anything like that, look, even 100% gains would be acceptable right? So put XAIR on your watch list. You may get that. You may get more. Our last stock, Vivo Sync, ticker RDGL. It is a hot stock, but maybe too hot. She was running on the charts today. It's a rocket stock and rocket stocks scare me because as fast as they shoot up, they fall back down to earth. And I try to avoid those. And I think we can avoid it here because this is a medical device company. I love these sort of companies because they come up with devices that help doctors and hospitals save money, do jobs faster and more efficiently, and are safer for the patients. And they've got money to pay for it. And you get these devices approved a heck of a lot faster than you do drugs. And the company today just got news from the FDA about one of their devices. And it looks hot to me. So RDGL, she finished today at about 7.9 cents with just over 50% gains. Now she's on the better tier of the OTC, the QB. It's literally called the better tier because it's better than the pinks. On the QB, you have to audit your financials. You're giving us legitimate numbers that we can use to weigh the company up. That's called fundamentals. You don't get that with pinks. We've also got the validated information. Transfer agent verified profile. So we've got validated numbers and validated information. They're looking good to me. So what is this company about? Well, they tell us over here that Vivos has developed Yatrium 90. It's a based injectable precision radionuclide therapy, Brock therapy device to treat tumors in animals. They call this isopet as well as humans. This is called radio gel. Using the company's proprietary hydrogel technology, Bacra Therapy uses highly localized radiation to destroy cancerous tumors by placing a radioactive isotope directly inside the tumor. The injection delivers therapeutic radiation from within the tumor without having to come through the skin. They're not using radiation outside of the body. They're actually putting it inside the tumor and working out. They tell us here that this feature allows the safer delivery of higher doses needed for treating non-resectable and radiation-resistant cancers. The FDA does not require pre-market approval for veterinary devices, so no additional approval was required to generate revenue through the sale of Isopet to university and animal hospitals and private veterinarians. So they're making money off of Isopet while we're working on the human version. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, that's a nice jump. We're looking at roughly 18 times her normal volume, 1,800% increase, going from under a half a million to 9.3 million today. Share structure, we've got 372 million outstanding. Looks like the insiders own about 46 million of them. That gives us a float of roughly 325 million, an average float. Market cap for the company is at 19.5 million. Financials, well, they're making money, just not very much of it. Four years ago, they were at $9,000. At the end of 2022, they were at $36,000. The only thing good you can say is they're bringing home profit every year. Not much though. Quarterly, they're not getting very far very fast, are they? Every quarter, 
They're doing about $6,000. This last quarter, they kicked it up to $7,000. But they have turned the corner. Looking at the gross profit, you can see every quarter they were losing money, except this last quarter. They got to keep everything they made, though it wasn't much. Taking a look at that balance sheet, cash and cash equivalents, they got $1.5 million roughly in the bank. That seems to be all their assets, 1.5 million, and total liabilities is really low, 107,000, which gives us positive shareholder equity of 1.4 million. Heck of a lot better than holding a bag. Disclosures. All right, we've got some disclosures here, the qualify and the 1A pause. We've got another 1A pause here. These are filed when they are considering doing a public offering. I haven't seen any information about that, but these are the clouds on the horizon. And we've got another Form 4 here. This is a purchase. This is from the CEO and President on the 14th of November, I believe it was, for 100,000 shares. Taking a look at that news now. Now, the company's got a lot of news, but we don't need to look at it all because it's all about this radio nuclide. We just want to look at the hot piece of news that came out today. They tell us that Vivos is pleased to announce that the Food and Drug Administration has granted Radiogel Precision Radionuclide Therapy the designation as a breakthrough device pursuant to the FDA's breakthrough device program. The breakthrough device classification will enhance the scheduled priority for our upcoming IDE submission seeking authorization to begin human clinical trials. The FDA's Breakthrough Device Program facilitates accelerated development and expedites the review of breakthrough technologies to help patients potentially gain timely access to technologies that can provide more effective treatment options. In other words, this is the best we got. So the FDA is going to help to get it out there fast. They're not going to cause waves. And this is big news, folks. Taking this... Uh, this chemotherapy, I guess you would call it, because they're still using radioactivity, but from inside your cell. Maybe you don't even lose your hair. Wouldn't that be a plus? Let's go take a look at this chart. I told you this was a rocket stock. This is RDGL Vivos Inc. It was back in April, we had a high of about 12 cents. She fell hard through her 200. Had a couple of breakout attempts over the 200, but didn't go anywhere with it, which is kind of surprising considering how tempting this 200 is. It has been flat a lot most of the time. Now, I do have a line drawn here, our resistance. This is the halfway point from the bottom to the top of that surge. So I'm watching for her to get there and once she gets on top to get some more strength. Now, off of this low bubble, she bounced up and she started going sideways, but she was doing more than that. She was climbing slowly. She crossed over all of her SMAs, got up on top of the 50-day SMA, and was there for about 10 days. Then she crouched down just before the news. I don't know if anybody knew or not. She tapped onto the 200 hall and she launched from about a nickel to eight and a half cents roughly before falling back right here to 7.8 cents. Our 200's way down there. We had lots of volume come in today. All of our SMAs that were falling here have all turned around and are pointing up, getting ready to cross that 200. All of our oscillators are on fire. Every single one of them is pushing up and our RSI is clear up there at 74. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So you can see here how she's climbing ever so slowly. She's got this rhythmic bounce going on, bouncing on the 200 hall. Then she got up onto the 50 and she's working her way. Took that crouch before the jump and we don't have one red bar on the hourly chart. And it really got strong at the end of the day there, folks. She was stuck right in this area, but she broke that and she finished the day at a high. We'll have to see on the five minute if she pulled back. Oscillators are still ripping and tripping. Every single one of them is on fire and going to the moon still. Looking at the five day, five minute. Yeah, we had a pullback. She was going sideways until that news came out today and broke that 200. Launched herself up real quick. It is about uh, 11 o'clock in the morning when she hit a high here of 7.9 cents. Went sideways, waiting, biding time. She did not want to fall down to these strong SMAs. She waited for the SMAs to come to her. 
once they came to her, she negotiated with them a little bit, and then boom, we had another pop here from seven and a half cents up to eight and a half cents. She pulled back, and right now she's at 7.8 cents. So this is growing. She is negotiating with the 50. She's taking on a new position. It looks good, folks. All of the SMAs are going in the right direction, except our nine day. That was a big drop at the end of the day. And it probably affected our osculators. Yeah, they are all hot, but you can see that big bar has turned them all down a little bit, except our RSI, which has plummeted down to 54 right now. But I like our DGL because of the medical device. That in itself, you've got a clientele of doctors and hospitals that have lots of money that are eager to use better equipment. Equipment that can save them time, be better for their patients, just all around better. So I think our DGL belongs on your watch list, especially seeing how the charts look. Now, folks, you know darn well I have not covered all the information for all these stocks. We don't have that sort of time. And I would still probably miss stuff. So do your own due diligence. It is your money. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. <laughs>